And welcome to the Geek Flicks and Justin Podcast YouTube channel. This is a show called What You Doing? Where we talk about what we watch and play during the week. I'm your host, Edward Prizes, and with me at some times, Miko PM. Felix. Why you, why, is it, uh, since I hit, since we started, you've been with that voice. What's wrong with you? Are you auditioning I don't know. It's, for maybe jazz? it's the coffee because I've been listening to Smooth Jazz mm. and I just, I'm drinking a fucking strong cup of coffee. So that may be it. So no you, sleeping for me tonight. You like your coffee like you like your man? Tall, dark, and handsome bear? And in my mouth. And in your mouth. <laughs> with, their, with the cream all in your mouth. Um... Oh, yeah. Let's start uh, with a little something. <laughs> yeah, moving along. Uh, from. I'm going to start. I watched Infinite. This is the Mark, Marky Mark movie where mm-hmm. he plays a man who discovers that his hallucinations are actually visions from past lives. Um, is he on drugs? No. It's like he dies and he. He doesn't come back to life, but his spirit travels to another body. Mm -hmm. And and it's not until they go through puberty or something that stuff starts to, like, click. And it's like, ah, Simon, so I'm that guy, huh? (laughs) So it's kind of like that. Okay. Uh, They touch upon mental illness, schizophrenia, that kind of stuff. Oh, it's kind of deep. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Mm. Uh, And then he retains everything he knows, you know? So he's mm-hmm. spiritually, he's thousands of years old, and the, I think it was in the trailer. He's crafting like a very dope sword or whatever, right? And nice. only people, only zam- samurais from the whatever hundreds can do that, thirteen hundreds, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so his spirit is hella old, and then he keeps turning into somebody else with the memories and with the thoughts and with the things of other people, right? Yeah. There's a lot of action, but it's ridiculous, fast and furious type action. Okay. It's pretty insane. Like it's 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 pretty wild. It's pure fantasy. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's it, I can't remember I forgot I watched it but he I, uh, again. So it's 10. It's what? It's a 10. No. I forgot <laughs> I watched it. I really did. So I'm trying to remember what was so ridiculous about it like cars jumping over shit. Um <laughs> but it's still it's still fun though. It's, I was so conflicted. Mm-hmm. Um. So the bad guy is Chiwetel Ejiofor, and yeah. there was some kind of there was some kind of Assassin's Creed thing going on, where mm-hmm. he he he's he's also like the uh, spiritual immortals, right? Yeah. But his clan wants to kill everybody, you know, oh, we to got end it. Involved? Well, it's just like good guys versus bad guys, you know, like okay. na- natural movie shit. Uh, so the Marky Marks are like, no, we don't want to die. And then the Chiwetels are like, yeah, let's destroy everything. Because the way he <laughs> say, the way he says it is like an endless loop. I'm just gonna die, mm-hmm. you know. Unless there's like these other guns involved that you shoot it, and then the spiritual, the spirit dies instead of whatever. So uh, it gets a little, it gets a little wacky, right? Yeah. So. The egg, if Chihuahua gets the fucking egg, it's like, okay, we're going to all implode and we all die forever. And then, yes, to so it's like, he's trying to get the egg. Marky Mark, no, don't want the egg and that kind of bullshit, right? And mm-hmm. Marky Mark's old self knows where the egg is. And but Marky Mark don't remember. So they're trying to get him to remember the whole movie. And then he remembers. And then they try to get they're fighting for an egg. But there's a lot of pew pews and vroom vrooms in the middle of it. The way you said it was like, oh, and they're doing. This. Yeah, because it's whatever. <laughs> uh, the best part are like the mijas. There's a mijas in this movie, which I appreciate. Shout outs to the mijas. Sophie Cookson was in there. Uh, Jason Menstukas was also in there. Shout outs to Who him the for. Fuck? He does every he does every voiceover the same. He's the crazy, pervy, sexy guy, in everything, and okay. everything, in Incredibles, and in, 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 not Incredibles, Incredible, Invincible. My bad. Oh, okay. You know that? Oh, that fucker, the that one guy. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. He does Jay and Big Mouth, so he's in this, and I can't tell if he's trying to do a. I can't tell if he's trying to do an accent or not. It just comes off really weird. I love that guy. He's so fucking weird. I love him. But he he does the same thing in every show, and everything. I don't though. care. I know that but over the top thing he does. It's like 
bringing me more of that. I get it, but he's getting typecasted as the same thing now. Because it's the same that, thing. True, true. That's 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 a bummer. Yeah. But he does it very well. Pussy, we'll stick to what you know, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so it, it's a very hetero fucking guys that like shooting boom booms and vroom rooms and mijas and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's not going to win any awards. I totally forgot about it. Uh, if it's not on your list, don't watch it. You can skip it. Who gives a shit, right? Uh, okay. I think it, this was on Paramount Plus. Okay. So kudos for them because it did have a good budget. It did look good. It didn't look, you know, see sci-fi or CW or whatever. But they look, you can tell que lo con huevos. So hmm. I want to applaud them because it was a good, a good, cool, different idea. Uh-huh. But at the same time, it's it's, it's a whatever. You know, if there's a little Mission Impossible vibe to it, but not really, but kind of. It's, it's a little weirdo. It's a little weird one. Okay. Uh, so I'm definitely watching. Yeah. I can see you watching it, but other people out there, you don't really have to. I forgot about it. I swear I did. <laughs> uh, not too bad. What the hell you been watching, fool, with your weird ass? So sticking, kind of sticking with the metaf- metaphysical shit. Ah, mira. <laughs> yeah, segways. Um, I saw this movie from 1998 yeah. at the bequest of my psychologist. Okay. A movie called What Dreams May Come with Robin Williams. Okay. And I thought, a comedy? But then I immediately remembered, he also does drama. Very well. And he does it very good. Yes. So... The thing is that with this movie, I'm going to just, I, I, if I read you the whole uh, Netflix, the, like the synopsis, re- the synopsis, it kind of gives things away mm. because well, I'm going to, uh, it says a physician who finds himself in heaven after an accident inhabiting the landscape of his wife's paintings. I'm so he died right and the movie don't tell you that he died or it's pretty obvious that he died. No, it's pretty obvious that he dies, okay. but he's kind of. The first uh, frames of the movie as him, it's him in his own funeral. So he goes through this like discovery of, so I'm in heaven. Why is heaven look so weird that, oh, I'm in a painting because this kind of feels weird. And he has a guide who's Cuba Gooding Jr. And that that role is actually pretty, pretty good. Uh, he's pretty chill so he kind of starts discovering himself and discovering his way through heaven and what heaven is okay then okay. then there's like a kind of a twist N- not a twist but there's a reveal that something happens okay and he's trying to find some people and then something else happens and there is like a, a lot of convoluted shit but it's a simple movie of like a person trying to find himself and find some other stuff but like the the levels of introspective thing, uh, introspective thought that this came up uh, made crawl up on me was like so heavy that it made me think about this movie for like a week and a half. Huh. So it does handle like um, death and the 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 grief very well. The the way it handles it, it's very interesting. In the way it handles like being ready for shit, it's I think it's like one of the best portrayals of that in a movie I've ever seen. Mm. And I mean Robin Williams is just was just a gem. And in this movie, he goes through all these feelings mm-hmm. and it he took me with him in all these feelings. So it like hooked the sunkest claws deep in my movie psyche. So I do recommend this. For me, it's a fucking eleven. So for normal people, it should should be like a nine. <laughs> so don't take it with a grain of salt. You should see this movie. But were you, what um, what were you expecting out of it though? When you sat down, did you just sit Nothing. down with the open eyes? You were like, "I ver qué pedo." Like exactly. Uh, he told me, you know what? My the psychologist told me. This movie, because Patch Adams really resonates me in like a emotional level, so he told me, you know what? There's a Robin Williams movie that resonates with me, and it's this one. Oh. So I recommend you watch it and tell me what you think. And I was like, okay, let's sit down, see what's up. And I sat down through the whole thing, and it was like, 
each each scene was an experience for me and and not like uh, uh, of course emotional but like the the way the storytelling the acting the emotions it brings out the everything so it's a lot of stuff that goes on <laughs> and it does it pretty well so i do recommend this movie it's not and it actually is not heavy so you you think a movie like this would be like really 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 uh, uh mentally heavy but it's not it's like a it does feel a little bit light of a movie yeah and it's almost two fucking hours long <laughs> it just breezes by so i would I, I really encourage you and everybody else to watch it because it's a very good movie i might check it out you saw it where on Netflix? yeah it's on netflix netflix yeah. has a lot of robin williams movies yeah I went to the rabbit hole uh, a couple years ago on Rab- Robin Williams, and this one escaped me. I remember when it came out, but I was like too young to give a shit. So maybe I, I give w- a shit. I, I would, I, I would imagine. Yeah. All right, bro. Let's keep pushing. Um, mm-hmm. Let's stay on Netflix, though. Okay. I watch a Netflix original anime series called hmm. Trece, bro. What? Trece? Neta, si, Trece? It's not spelled okay. like our trece. It's spelled like maybe Filipino trece. Oh, that's yeah, it's Filipino. Yeah, T R E S E. Yeah, because yeah, this is set in Manila, where the uh-huh. mythical creatures of the Philippines folklore live in hiding <laughs> amongst humans. <laughs> Alexandra Trece finds herself going head to head with a criminal underworld compromised of malevolent supernatural beings. Mm-hmm. Um, Sounds enticing. I, is, this sounds like all you, you know, kind of creepy, kind of supernatural, kind of creepy shit, kind of, kind of, kind of. Perfect. Yes. It's only six. Don't ep- me too hard. It's only six episodes, less than thirty minutes. Uh, hmm. This was a weird one. Uh, I just popped it in because it was six episodes. Like I had Capel. The animation is very stoic, kind of a little uh, slow, kind of Castlevania in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh. The story is about this girl. She's a detective. She's trying to figure shit out. Her dad was a detective, but she summons stuff and and she talks to all these underworld vampire ghost thingies from Philippine folklore that I have nothing to know about. I know nothing about, but they look pretty cool. She has spells. She summons things. Uh, so that's basically it. Um, okay. It's, it's bloody. It's pretty bloody. The fight scenes are pretty cool. Uh, it's just the story is kind of whatever and they kind of like super duper explain everything at the last episode it's so weird so they dump it on you yeah each episode is kind of live on its own is basically its own case right oh this girl mm-hmm. f- dies and she's trying to figure out who did it and that she's figuring out who did it obviously at the long at the end of the scheme you know it's like she died because of this and this and then they piece all everything together towards the end but there's also this other weird explanation it was like no lie probably like 15 minutes of this of the of the big bad guy just explaining every mansplaining everything to her so not even explaining mansplaining yeah 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 because it's like everything for she's like going on a damn tangent for like 15 minutes and it was, it was a little mm-hmm. too much i didn't like that but that's like the last episode but the lead up to that it's pretty fun it's pretty cool i think you'll like it um the one thing i do not like at all are the voiceovers mm. uh alexandra who's played by shay mitchell miha shout out to shay mitchell i like her she's very cool um uh steve uh bloom is also in there so every human in the show oh miha damn yeah i'm telling you Every human in the show, the voiceover is terrible. They're really dry. Neta? Yeah, they're dry and 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 low key boring. You know, like okay. very very boring. They have no personality in their voices. It, it's all the same tone, this the same exact way. All the other goblins and shit, they're kind of cool. You know, what's going on, bitch? What's good? You know, that's kind of shit. So they add a little flavor to it, but all the humans are really really dry and kind of boring. Mm-hmm. So. It's a tough I, one. It's definitely not the best thing I've seen on Netflix for sure. It's not. I don't know. It's kind of hard to recommend. I, I kind of get the dryness because I've, I've I have listened to audio dramas that are like, oh, I can't listen to you because of the, of the voiceover. 
Yeah, it's just super dry. I don't know why they do uh, uh, Yasuke also with, with our yeah. boy Estevato, el, el Estevato from Atlanta. Darius. Simon. Lakeith. Lakeith Johnson. Johnson? Yeah. Lakeith Stanfield. Yeah, Stanfield. Johnson. <laughs> I don't know why I said <laughs> he Johnson. Uh, he's also very dry. And, and it's weird, but he's dry. I feel like his characters are dry as well in the, in the, in the, on the other shows. There's charisma in his dryness. Yeah, and now that I think about Castlevania, they're kind of dry too. A little bit. Well, I mean, you. It does. Um, what's the word? Oh. It is called for because of the oh. like the life the characters have had, but they have a, a meaning to their dryness. But if they're just dry, like you well, say, because they're vampires too. Dr- dr- when vampires did they are... went from a normal guy to a valley guy? Oh my god! I don't know. What the fuck no, but are you I, drinking I get in it. that coffee? Uh, I do not know. Jesus I'm going to have Christ. to buy more tomorrow. Anyway, uh, 13 on Netflix. Just because of the six episodes, you, if you're into that shit, I definitely recommend it to you because you're a, a creepy fuck like that. And I feel like you'll find something <laughs> that you'll like it. You'll find you'll you'll find stuff to like about it. Everybody mm-hmm. else, give it like a two-episode treatment because they're pretty okay. similar. It was like, oh, what's the deal? We'll find the deal. We fix the deal. Tan, tan. Then the last episode is just like, information of why stuff happened. And they're like, okay, hey, tan, tan. And it's over. I don't know if there's going to be another ep- a season or what. Six episodes. It was easy, peasy, beautiful. Couple girl dog. Perfect. All right. What you been catching up on, bruh? Well, keeping it on the bloody, gory, supernatural side, I'm... Catching off to Resident Evil 7. Um, Welcome to 2000. What was it? 17, bro? I think so. See, wait. 17, 16? 17. Damn. I'm really behind. You're the behind it. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've been bitching and moaning for me to play this game. And I have wanted to. Because but I don't know why. Did you buy I it since you bought the Xbox? What, you seven? Been, no, I never had it. You, Cause you've been bitching about it. I'm gonna fuck what you do with your life, son. You, you no, you, but every time I, I say I, I want to play this, you don't. Why the fuck don't you play this game? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Because aren't you a Resident Evil fan? I am. Okay, but I don't. I don't know what 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 made me not want to play it. I don't know. I think it was the a first, first person? person thing. Yeah, yeah, maybe that guy kind of caught me off guard. Yeah, and I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna see what's up. And fuck me sideways, dude. Ain't bad I had a lot of fun. Yes, it's great. It's great. I mean, the fact that I never get to see Ethan, which is the main character, it's I like it. Yeah. Because I only know his voice. His one-liners are kind of funny, but it's it's really cool because he goes from oh my god, what the fuck was that? By uh, at the beginning to by the end, saying like I'm gonna fuck you up. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, that's probably, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for the game, that once you get, like, the halfway mark, you're not afraid anymore. You're just running through the mansion like you own that bitch, shotgunning zombies to the face. But up until the first couple encounters, you're creeping up the corner because you don't know what's going to happen, and you're all scared and shit. You're holding on to your nuts, like, a la bit what's going to happen. But then, after, like, I would say a little bit less than the half mark, you're like, what's up, bitch? Pa! In the shotgun well, to the fizz ace. So I put a handicap on myself in that game because mm-hmm. you can get like a a toy. Uh, you get a broken shotgun to get like the normal shotgun, yeah. like the normal puzzle. Put the broken, get yeah. the good one, and blast the fuck out of everybody. So I put a handicap on myself. I said, you know what? I want to fix the broken one and use that one because I saw that it fired faster. And I was like, okay. So I did not use a shotgun for a long uh, like a big chunk of the game yeah and it creeped me the fuck out because i couldn't kill like the mold monsters right they they got old like pretty quick yeah but the fact that i didn't have the shotgun made it i don't know it, it uh up the creep factor for me because I, I was scared because i never had bullets because i they're like sponges then i found out that the knife is pretty pretty fucking strong against those motherfuckers and then I started using the knife and I lost my fear. Then I got that shotgun. Then I, I never got the Magnum. But it is fun. Yeah. The I love the family. I love, uh, what was it? 
Jack, the, yeah, the the the, the father, yeah. He was a cool boss. The his fight They're was really cool fun, and it has that Resident oh, Evil thing where they just don't fucking die near. Yeah, but this is this goes like a step further. Yeah, and goes over the top with that because he's like fighting with half a fucking head, and and then you like chainsaw duel him. It was nuts, and I loved every second of it. That's why I told and you to I play. Think, yeah, 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 and I, and I know why. And the the fight with the the wife. Yeah. Oh my god. I think that was the most afraid I've been in the entire game. Yeah. Because the setting, the, the, the ambiance, it's like, ugh. And yeah, it's just crawling out the fucking wall with, ugh. Yeah, the whole thing is nasty. Yeah. It's the yeah, nastiest it's, uh, game for sure. Yes. It's nasty. And it's nasty. Resident Evil 7, nasty. Yeah, and by the end, I was like, you know what? bring it i'm a fuck it up and i did and i loved it and and i want to play it just one more time because i want to get like the like the hand cannon uh i'm this is like one of the times i'm really fucking happy i i listen to you because i've been happy listening to you motherfucker but like with this one i'm like i'm fucking happy i did because you played what i told you you never play what i tell you no because i, I got <laughs> like freaky tastes because you're playing tastes. other shit right See how happy yeah, you are like, when you really listen to do? me? Yes, listen to me, you stupid fuck. <laughs> I'm listening to you. I got the list. Uh-huh. Yeah, but then I'm... you play Wakamili. Uh, so before you keep going on what the fuck you're going to play, I watched mm-hmm. The Nevers and the Nevers and the Errors and Fravers. Doc. The what? The Nevers. The what? The Nevers. The fuck is that? The Nevers, dog. The Nevers and the Errors and Fravers. That's what I call them. It's the show that came out on HBO Max like a month oh, ago. Oh, shit. About the See ladies one. that look like fucking oh, X-Men. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Okay. So it's an epic tale following oh, okay. a gang of okay. Victorian women who find mm-hmm. themselves with unusual abilities, relentless enemies, and a mission that might change the world. Okay. Again, six episodes, less than an hour. Um, it's it's created by Josh Wheaton. Joss Wheaton. Joss. Joss Wheaton. So you know mm-hmm. but it's not it's good actually i actually enjoyed this very much uh so it's set in 1899 london there's ladies kicking ass so there's like this weird ass alien thing that hits the skies uh three years before and there's like little little stars hit people right and those people become mm-hmm. just in, in our terms mutants but in this world, they're called touched and they have powers, even though it feels weird to call them touched. Like, I think something else mm. completely. That's not good. It does it does not, it not. It don't sound like a goomba, whatever. Mm-hmm. But they have different powers and it's mostly women uh, and some men. But it's, the focus is mostly on the women. Uh, so that's going on. And society is like, boo, get the touched out of here, right? Every time they said it, I cringed. It sounds weird. Again, I'm, I'm yeah. It's weird. Um so yeah get the touch daddy here fuck them and then they're like oh they attack them and then there's like all this uh segregating between the touched and the non-touched so weird mm. uh but this so one X-Men. the two is kind of x-men yeah so the, the two main ladies <clears throat> first one is amalia true her powers is like she can kick ass right uh and then she has like uh like that's so raven powers where she sees a glimpse of the future for a second and mm-hmm. she doesn't know who, how, or why, but she knows she has to get to that point to understand what's going on. Okay. Uh, and then the other one is Penance. Uh, penance. I can't say the last thing. A day or a deer or whatever. I don't know. It's a little blonde cutie lady. She can see electric currents and how they go. And so she's like a super mega uh, gadget girl. So she makes all the gadgets. So she's got them riding in cars while they're still horses running around so she fucks with electricity and gadgets and she's the gadget lady right Mm -hmm. and so the first one runs an orphanage um so it's kind of like miss pedigree miss x-men but with all ladies right Uh, very girl power um there's a there's a bad guy who's like in parliament and is like all about the empire and like we don't want ladies up here and he's like very very nasty that way 
Uh, there's also a detective. He's trying to figure out what's going on because all these touch were coming up kind of dead. And he's like, who's killing them? And then there's this other bad lady came in. So there's a bunch of characters all over the place. They're all kind of cool. Um, the main ladies are badass. They kick ass. The very the main main lady, La Ravens. That's what I called her because she just get those fucking <laughs> visions. Her ravens. She kicks ass really cool and it's believable. You know, it's not like, like I believe it. You know, uh, well, there's there's mm-hmm. one crazy scene where she takes down this giant guy, and is like, I believe it because she's been kicking ass all up to this point, and I like the way she's kicking ass. I just like the way she moved. Look really cool. Mm-hmm. Again, Mihan's all over the place. The two main ladies are very 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 appealing. Uh, there's an unexpected death in the again the finale was a little weird because they brought in other stuff they went i don't know if it's a spoiler alert, but they like you're so into the story of 1899 right mm-hmm. and then for the last episode you're in the future and they're explaining everything but again it takes like 40 minutes to explain everything but i really just cared about what's going on with these ladies because they mm-hmm. have a, they, you know they 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 have a mission. They got they gotta collect all these mutants. I'm just gonna call them mutants because calling them touched is weird. I gotta find all these mutants. There's a fire lady. There's this little girl who's fucking huge. Uh, in the in the future one, or like the main cast. In the in the in London in the main mm. cast. Uh, in the future is just to explain something really not really quick, but explain one little thing, kind of. Okay. Uh, and then there's, there's like this alien egg thing that's emitting power and they're trying to figure out who, why, or what. And then there's just so many characters, bad guys, everything. There's like four bad guys. Uh, and they all have different things going on. So it's very interesting. I actually liked it. I couldn't stop watching it. It was very interesting to me. It doesn't look oh, wow. CW. It looks really cool. All all except for the, 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 the finale. I know like Nick Frost is like a gangster guy. He's like a fat fuck and it's funny. Oh, he's, bless that fucker. He breathes real heavy and shit. You can hear it. He's like, so I'm going to tell you about these guys. That's fucking. I thought that was funny because <laughs> he's breathing hella heavy because he's fat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a good one. I liked it a lot. It's just the finale was weird. And now it's, so just, it's, 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 it's a weird. couple of series where the whole body of the thing is cool, but the finale kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely wow. recommend The Nevers and The Nevers and Nevers over Trece for sure. Okay. Uh, you should check this one out, I think. Yeah. You should check Actually this one out. Actually putting it on my list. It's a good watch. But again, just it's like you, you're leading up to this grand thing and then you're following that story. And in the very last, fin- like the finale, you're ready to to conclude this story and they throw something else at you and it takes a while to catch up to this story so it's like the whole episode you're like oh, okay cool but i wanted to know what the fuck a d1 you mm-hmm. know and they don't really answer the d1 because they set it up for other things so it's, it was this little okay. switcheroo that i was like okay cool but that's not what i wanted for my finale but cool mm. it's cool there's no filler so that's great i really really liked it just all, everything except the finale Nelly was a little bummed. Oh, okay. That sucks. But definitely watch it. It's mutant ladies kicking ass. I don't want to say touch ladies, but mutant ladies kicking ass. Uh, why? Why? It's, it sounds so wrong. Yeah. Every time they said it, I cringed. The touch. Okay. The touch. Oh, and no, there's the other guy who's getting the touch to like start a stripper joint. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Titties. What the fuck? There's titties. I mean, <laughs> there's titties. Nice. Well, HBO. So, yeah. 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 yeah the, the, tain, the main two ladies are fucking gorgeous. You know? Did you say taint? The main two ladies. Oh, like the internet just like the the the, the feed just kind of cut off, and I heard, just heard the taint, and was like, oh, okay. Uh, the secondary lady, I, I heard the actress is Anne Skelly. She's like porcelain gorgeous, bro. She looks like a doll. She's really, Anne really pretty. Skelly. Yeah, she's really really pretty. But I like the main okay. lady too. I liked everybody. All the good guys, I liked. Even the bad guys were pretty cool. Okay. Not the not the asshole uh macho guy, he was kind of a dick. But that's kind of the point. The nevers. AKA the nevers and nevers and nevers and forever. God damn. T way. Mm. Model esque. A doll. Yeah. She's a doll. Yeah, shit. The nevers. The Watch nevers it. and nevers and the fucking nevers. Nevers. Uh let's close this bitch out, bruh. With the final okay. review of La Semana. This was released free on Disney Plus, air quotes, Luca, 
from Pixar. Is this stinky? Is it fresh? Mm -hmm. What? I didn't get it. Can we? Luca, what's up? Okay. Me hundiaste bien cabrón. What the fuck were you trying to say? Mm -hmm. No, like fish. Is it stinky? Is it fresh? Uh, uh, oh, fish. This guy didn't say fish. I say Luca. Um, mm -hmm. On the Italian Riviera, an unlikely but strong friendship grows between a human being and a sea monster disguised as a human. Huh. Mm -hmm. That that description is a little off, but whatever. I wouldn't I wouldn't describe it like that. I would have described no. it. I would have said uh, a strong friendship grows between two boys on on a search for a new a new world or something like that. Yeah, that sounds more about right. Yeah. Hmm. I'm super confused. I'm going to let you go first, bro. What you thought about Luca? Luca do. <coughs> oh shit, I kind of drowned. Um coffee went in wrong. Um I don't know. I'm going to say I had fun. Okay. Uh just pointing out I think Pixar has to my knowledge has never Popped out a bad movie. Um, bad mm. is is a is a harsh word, but there's been some duds. But it's not a bad movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not saying this is a dud because I did have fun. Every time you say it was, Pixar bad movie, I think of the, the little dinosaur, and it's not bad. It's just it's just okay. Yeah, that yeah, exactly. It's okay. Yeah, and with this one, it, I mean, it's definitely better than the little dinosaur. Yeah. But I don't know. It. it uh, I don't know how to feel with this one. Okay, let me let me walk you through it. So it's a coming of age yes, story. Please. Where little Luca, he's a he's a he's a sea creature, and he sees this other kid who's also a sea creature, and the, the other kid just walks out of water, and he's a human outside the water, and then Luca's like, "Holy shit, what's good? What's what's going on right there?" So it has the Pixar charm. The visuals are are great. There's a little bit of Little Mermaid because Luca collects gadgets and gizmos of plenty and thingamabops and all that shit. Um, mm -hmm. The villain, which is a kid who's who's because ultimately what they what they, they the kids want to run away and they want to buy a Vespa and to buy a Vespa they see there's a con uh, uh, a a tournament or a little race. That you get money for, and then like the bad guy who was giving me kind of like the Ratatouille bad guy vibes. He kind of looked the same a little bit, but stretched out. You know, you didn't see that. You feel he me? really did. And the way he portrayed himself, he had that nasty nose. He just gave me that feel. Um, so he's like Good the he, he's like the oldest kid, and he, he's the winner all the time. And then there's this other girl who's like trying hard all the time, and then she, they befriend the little girl, and they they race. So it's a, it's a little bit all over the place. What if he is the bad guy from Ratatouille? They're Italy, and he was all Italy and not French. Oh, like, hey, he was just a kid. Mm, I mean, uh, maybe. They, I mean, he's already. He I'm was taller. He on. was. I know he was taller than himself <laughs> when he was a kid. Make no sense. Well, when you when you get older, you shrink. I know, but he don't look anyway. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but if you've seen Pixar shorts, they ha this has more of that vibe stretched into a movie. It did feel like that. It feels smaller than every other ones. Uh, it, even though it's lived in, there's people in the town. It just takes place in the in in the water of the town, and that's it. You don't see anything else. That's kind of like the whole point. Luca wants to go out and explore. He's been trapped underwater, and he's like a sheep herder, so he wants to see more. So I got that. That's kind of cool, but it it did feel smaller. It's pro it's probably the smallest Pixar movie for sure. Because even in yes. Toy Story, it could be taking place in a few blocks, but because you're smaller, everything looks bigger. You know, same yeah, with the, Bugs the Life. scope of the thing is way broader. Yeah, uh, the animation is great. Um, Flawless. Bubbles went hardcore and he, he named it his top two, top three Pixar movie. Wow. Um, I, Holy we'll, we'll, I'm all, shit. We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit uh, before we go into spoilers. I don't know if it's spoilers, spoilers, but whatever. It's very funny. I was laughing. It's, it's cute funny. You know, they would say some things and catch me off guard and I would laugh. I was laughing. It was it was pretty funny. Really? You didn't find it to be funny? I find it whimsical, but I'm funny. I was laughing. I think the funniest part of the movie was the... 
the asshole kid. It's, it's weird to call him a kid, too, because that's not Well, for us 16-year-olds, our guess. kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, the cat was funny. I, I, I was laughing. The I cat know. was hilarious. I love that guy. So the, there's certain picks. There's a, definitely picks our um, characters, you know, that, okay, we know that that can be made into a toy or whatever. Um, yeah, picks our standouts. What do you grade it real quick? I would give it an eight. Okay, that sounds about right. Yeah, eight. Mm-hmm. Eight. Yeah, eight. It's good. Uh, so we're going to get to slight spoil- spoils because I wanted to get your opinion on it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a spoiler or not. I'm just going to go throw up the spoil spoils. Boom, spoil spoils. Um, <clears throat> did you get any gayness out of it? Mm, I have heard this. Um, I don't care what other people I'm asking you. No, no, no. I know, I know, I know. The thing is that I would imagine that it would translate like translate like this. Yeah. But what I got was more like a like a kid looking at a role model for the first time. Mm. Like having a role model and he sees uh, the, 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 the what's his name? The other guy. Mm. I don't remember that. The kid who lived in the Alberto. surface the whole time. Alberto. Yeah. I see more like a young kid looking at Alberto as like a role model or something. Yeah. Well, yeah, like that. More than like him having a certain attraction kind of thing to him. So Mm -hmm. I do get it, but I don't see it. You don't see it? No. Shout out to Anton. He didn't see it either. I was uh, looking for it. So I don't know if that that's the thing that I was looking for because I remember saying with the even with the trailer I was saying this kind of gives me kind of you know kind of LGBT vibes there's kind of gay vibes in there uh, Bubbles was saying mm-hmm. no or I forget and then after watching the movie Bubbles called it an LGBT Pixar movie I kind of see the gayness too um, and after when, when you look for it it's easy to spot but I mean I think it's a little bit more open ended than they're not clear with it, so maybe you can interpret it like that. Maybe not. I'll get into what Pixar is saying, but I was I was I was oh. really trying to wonder whether or not it's gay the whole time. Oh yeah, but I don't know if I if if it was just me or whatever. Uh, but I was I was catching subtle hints and subtle things that I don't know if it was gay or not. Like they would touch, they were touching each other a lot, like holding, grabbing the way that Luca would grab his arm, the way just the way that he was holding onto him in the bike. There were certain oh, yeah. subtleties that that made me feel like it was gay. And even Alberto's jealousy towards Julia felt more. It just felt more than just a friendship to me. Really? I And even the, when they were the crying because they laughed and everything, it just felt a little bit more. And obviously Bubbles felt it too. He called it an LGBT mm-hmm. gay movie. Uh, but I don't know if I was just tripping. I don't know if I was just, I made it in my head that. I don't know. I saw when Alberto was jealous of, yeah. the, of the girl who's Julia. Okay, the, uh, Julia. When he was jealous, I was like, okay, I understand he's jealous because this kid, the uh, Luca, looked up to him. Yeah. Then he kind of lost his interest because of this new person. Yeah. And he wanted to keep his interest. I was like, okay, I get it. But, and I do get why. It's easy to see that maybe he was like, oh, I like Luca. Why, why is this bitch taking him away from me? Yeah. I do get it. But I I kind of yeah. take it a little bit more as a he wanted his attention because he's never gotten that attention. And he's seeking his attention. But then he got, like, is more mature and whatever. But I don't know. I since Because they're kids. Yeah. I kind of take it more like that. If they were older, it would definitely be more... Uh, it wouldn't be so subtle for me and it would be like oh, okay that they're going for this right but you didn't see it Anton didn't either uh, no, after, no, no. after googling a lot of people were asking whether it was or not so definitely some people feel like there was grounds for it to be a a, a, a gay LGBT. love story kind of I guess mm-hmm. LGBT mm-hmm. love story Pixar came out and said it's not 
Okay. So that's where that ends, right? We can't mm -hmm. argue Bubbles as much as he would want to because he he already labeled it an LGBT movie. You can't Pixar saying no, right? So I have mm -hmm. to stand with Pixar, even though I saw every single little subtlety that Bubbles saw. <laughs> I saw the whole thing, right? I read it the same exact way he did. The way Bubbles is gay. They were I am not. I don't other. know if that's yeah. clear or not. <laughs> no, but I mean, but your gaydar is really active because you yes. fucking raised yes. that bitch. I can smell that shit. Yeah, and it's like, but and that's a real thing because even like <laughs> when people recently, the, uh, an, an American Idol contestant came out right, and Bubbles made a joke like, "Yeah, bitch, we've been new. Like we knew. Like where you mm -hmm. been? Thanks for catching up to it. We knew." We knew you were gay already. So I believe mm -hmm. gaydar is a real thing. Uh, mine is really trained. <laughs> Bubbles is as well. So I, 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 my gaydar was going off for Luca. But the picks are saying no. I, the no. way Luca kind of held Alberta's waist was like, okay. I kind of found it weird. But again, they're kids. I was like, yeah, okay. yeah they're, they're kids. Yeah. But Bubble read it more as like your first crush kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Or your... your and other people saw it as your very first friend kind of thing. Yeah. It's just I I, I interpreted That's how I saw it. Interpreted different things with the same movie. You know? Mm -hmm. The the way he would look at him, I were interpreted as like, you know, damn, Luca loved this fool. And it's not mm -hmm. it's more more of admiration or whatever. What yeah. I was trying to get at is Pixar said it's not. Okay? Mm -hmm. Case closed. What I don't want is Pixar to say it is in five fucking years which is what we're doing now with movies and other characters if they would have been like yeah it, it, it has hints or of the of a beginning of an lgbt relationship fuck yeah it came out in pride month it's todo que chingon i don't want pixar to backtrack and say in 10 years five years however long oh luca was our first lgbt movie don't do that shit no because the, then i'm gonna be pissed. pixar yeah and people would be pissed and that automatically would make pixar a bitch yes i don't want that Be and 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 they've they've done things to represent the lgbt community and onward i think the cop has a wife right it's a female cop has a wife um as far as as far back as cars three i think um one of the cars goes into like a derby rally or whatever and like the big mm -hmm. thing is like the the moose or the the bessie i think it's and it's like a school bus Who's mm -hmm. like a, a wild boar that's gonna fuck everybody up? She has a Lightning McQueen lightning sticker with L, with the pride colors, so that's fine. That's obvious. Mm -hmm. That's in your. That's not in your face. They kind of had it out on the side, and you have to like zoom in to catch it. But I remember seeing that. I was like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought this was LGBT. It turns out that is not. Stick to your guns. If this is not it, this is not it. You already had a chance. The the, the director of the movie said it's not. I don't want you guys backtracking in five years saying that it is y la verga. You already said it isn't, so it isn't. Mm -hmm. Even though Bubbles, you know, said that if he was a little kid, he would have read it differently or, or it depends. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't mean you can't be influenced or, or feel a type of way about the movie. But if the people who are making it saying that it's not LGBT, it's not LGBT. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if Pixar says it's not, it's not. I mean, case closed. But that's what I'm saying. That, but no, now no, no, they're going that's back. That's the canon. Yeah, that's canon. And yeah, again, if you go back, they're bitches. But I mean, if Bubbles wants to see it as an LGBT movie, fuck it. Go I'm right saying, ahead. Right. Because they I mean, if you look, if you like search for it, it does come off as a, as that. And I again, I saw it more as like a first friend than a first crush. But it is easy to see. So if you want to think that, fuck it. No, no, no. But the truth I is that. It's not. <laughs> I'm going with the Pixar said and Pixar says it's not. No, me too. Um, I mean, if the, if the I, creators I, say it. I, I was thinking that it was. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, Bubbles can stick with the, with saying that it is and he can see it that way. And that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going with Canon. They saying, no, all I want is for them not to backtrack in however long, whenever they fuck they want and be like, oh, no, no. Yeah, it is. Because I'm going to remember that shit and I'm going to roast you. Is because if they do that, that's gonna be like a very, very dark spot in the rap sheet, right? Because they've been doing pretty fucking decent since they started. So I mean, there could be more LGBT representation. That's why I was like, exactly. okay, L Pride mm -hmm. Month makes sense. Tal putazo, it's all it's all ready for you to go. 
just for you to say, yeah, it could be, or it could be, or leave it open. But he's it, the, the the director mm-hmm. flat out said it's not. And it would be very cool if they like had more representation because I think Pixar is like the best way to get into kids like kids zeitgeist. And it would be like a good introduction to that. Like a like I don't know how people slow. I don't know how I don't know how little kids feel about Pixar movies. I feel like adults fall in love with the Pixar's movies more than the kids. No, but I mean if like the like the movie stands out in a kid's childhood, for example, yeah. Toy Story was a big thing for me. I may be, I may not wear it on wear I may not wear it on my sleeve, but I grew up with Toy Story. You grew up with Toy Story. Right. So now we the did. Pixar movies now for us adults hit a little harder because that's exactly. also a target so yeah, i'm saying exactly. uh, you're like your nephew i don't know how much he what's his favorite pixar movie everyone does he fall in as hard as we used to fall i don't know if that's the thing because it's a different time no but for example uh, well yeah maybe not pixar but he for example he loves the fuck at a paw patrol and mickey mouse Okay. So let's say in Mickey Mouse, there's like a LGBT character. He is going to remember that shit. And I say that because I know my nephew. But he's not going to know what it is. does not forget. But he, he doesn't might know. not know what it is, but maybe that's a character that may stick on him. Maybe. Right. But the to, him way- is just a, it's, it's, to him, it's just a character that looks like whatever. No, no, no. And that's what I'm trying to get. To him, it maybe look like that, but it's gonna stick in his mind. And right. when he grows older, he's gonna look, look remember, and say, "Oh, okay, I get now that I see it in retrospect. I get why this character was like that and did this and did that." So it may be like a soft introduction, because Toy Story for me was like a soft introduction to like growing the fuck up. Mm, so in that that's, way, that's it, too deep for a child. I think. I didn't. I wasn't thinking about growing up in the first Toy Story. I was. Just, I was trying to fly like brothers without breaking my leg. <laughs> True. It but wasn't until the third th- one when I was a grown ass adult. That's when it hurt. It hurt. I hit. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I feel you. But I was yeah, already. Re- I was already a giant fucking person. Yeah, but in retrospect, you do kind of get what the first one trying to do would try to do with. The, the toys and everything but like now when they got lost and Andy got like, not, oh ba- not, so, not back when I was watching it now no 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 but it a lot of stuff stuck with you that now that you're older you understand it so maybe they am introducing LGBT LGBTQ stuff in movies right now are gonna stick with kids and when they grow older they're like oh okay now I get it so I think I that's think gonna so. help a lot of people I see what you're saying but I feel like mm-hmm. the LGBT characters is more for us because the kid mm, isn't okay. going on Twitter saying, give me more LGBT representation on my Pixar movies. It's the grown you ass 30 year old person. Correct. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. And I'm not you're I'm completely not, right. I'm not saying don't put him in there. I'm saying, yes, put him in there. Yeah. I mean, but it's not for the kids. It's for us. And, and, it, and, and it's kind of a bummer because that's going to prepare kids for the future. Right. So if it's normalized in a fantasy movie like Onward. Where this one-eyed bitch is like my girlfriend, mm-hmm. and the kid might be like, "Why is she saying a girl?" And then you you, you have to educate and let them know what <laughs> you know. Bitch. Isn't it one? Isn't it one-eyed lady that yeah, has a girlfriend? But, yeah. <laughs> and it's one subtle thing that's not for the kids. That's for us to go like, "Ah, oh, hell yeah, cool!" Right. Mm-hmm. So I just thought that they took a a giant leap in putting out an LGBT love story, but mm-hmm. turns out it's not. But now, don't go back on it, is all I'm saying. You said no. The answer is no. You fucks. Circling back around. You fucks. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, don't be a uh, But Luca's good, though. LGBT story or not, I found it kind of cool. It takes things from Little Mermaid, takes things from other movies. It, do- it I mean, it doesn't feel completely original. It doesn't splash culture uh, of, of Italian Italian culture, like Coco, for example. You don't feel engulfed by the culture, which is kind of a negative, you know? I must say something Mm. that's kind of like that's kind of a deep cut okay (laughs) when they were drinking coffee yeah they used this coffee pot that's completely italian made i was like oh shit right that was cool 
But again, the kids won't know that. No, no, that's something for for people like me that right. like coffee. And, like, oh. and that's what I kind of meant. And, in and, and Coco, probably lit kids watching the movie were like, oh, I know what Dia de los Muertos is now. You know? Mm-hmm. There isn't anything mm-hmm. like that for oh, no. the Italian nothing... culture in this movie. It's, yeah, l- nothing culturally impactful. Other than all Italians are gay. Anyway. <laughs> uh, no. Same way. And the two old ladies were mer- people all along. Yeah. Those are MVPs too. The, the, the two old ladies were great. Nah, my MVP is a cat. Uh, anyway, look as okay. Watch, watch it with your kids. If y'all grown ass motherfuckers and have children, leave a comment down below what they thought about Luca. If you guys can muster that response, because I'm really, really curious. I'm gonna ask all my cousins who have children what they thought about Luca. Did they give a shit? Obviously, they they didn't find any of the LGBT stuff, but I wonder if they th- still find it to be an entertaining movie. I liked it. I enjoyed mm-hmm. it. Uh, but leave a comment down below what you've thought about everything we watch. Have you seen? Uh, where the fuck is it? Felix's movie, what's it called? The Dreams of My uh, Life? What Dreams May Come. What Dreams May Come. Did you watch Infinite? Are you going to watch Trece? Uh, if you play Resident Evil 7, what do you think about it? Are you going to watch The Neighbors and The Neighbors and The Neighbors? And what do you thought about Luca? Anything you want to say to the beautiful people, Felix? Relax, chill. Don't drink coffee at night and eat ass. Eat ass? Do you want to dip ass in the coffee? Sure, why the fuck not? Let's try something new. <laughs> anyway. Awesome forever, you deal. Bye. Bye.